a, a lot comes along with being the best, but the biggest thing that I think that comes with being the best is you as your tree branch, you as your tree stump. How many branches did you help branch off? Come on, man, let's go. And 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 that's what I think sets motherfuckers apart from. Oh yeah, he's a great. Oh, but he's the best, or he's the goat. Like, mm. who did you help? Who did you inspire? Like, like prime example, Greg Street. And then got thirty generations of radio under him. Mm. He's inspired people younger than me, people older than me, people older than older than them. Like, he's a great in radio. Like, he's a goat. Yeah. And there's nothing you can take from him. If you, if you start a tree right now, and and he's the tree stump in a tree, he has a billion branches on his tree. Mm. That's what I personally think makes you a great. And if you don't have no branches on your tree or if nobody can testify that you helped them along their way or that you gave them game or that you put them in a position to make some money or be a better dinner, better them, I don't think you're a goat. I don't think you're a great. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. It's so many places to go with you. I've been wanting to have this conversation. It's so so close to home for me, especially because, like, just the hosting thing. Mm -hmm. You killed radio, bro. <sighs> you, did, you bodied that, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, ready, radio. I, I, I've made a stamp thus far. I ain't nowhere near where I need to be as far as my legacy, but... It's a it's a great start. It's a great start. It's perfect. Every let's get into it. Yo, what's pop? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. This guy right here. Oh my God. I mean, self proclaimed goat, but I mean, the proof is in the pudding. The writing is on the wall. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm just saying. I'm gonna give you your respect. Uh, I mean, broke so many artists. He from the DMV, but he moved to the Atlanta. This is my first time ever doing like a. a, a uh, uh, intro, right, Kyron? So, oh wow, you know, I don't really do, do intro, but this guy, like, you know, I just give him his respect. Um, he moved to the Atlanta and just, I mean, it was up from there. Radio with uh, streets, I don't know the numbers down streets here. Nine, four, yeah. Five, yeah. I don't know the numbers, streets 945, and I mean, it just went crazy from there. No, nah, that's a fact, man. I mean, How you God feeling, is good. dog? Fly Guy DC is in the building, man. Absolutely right, man. It's an honor to be here, uh, first and foremost. For you to be one of the ones, like, I done seen, I done seen the growth. I appreciate it, uh, The elevation of of what you're doing, and it's extremely dope. Like, I done seen you didn't, you've been getting some of the who's who's. Appreciate it. Like, the, the, the people you are interviewing are, 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 highly qualified and et cetera. Mm. So salute to you and everything that you have going on over here, man. I appreciate that. And that's kind of goes into my segue. I was going to ask you, we always call ourselves the GOAT or the good ones or the ones that deserve it, right? Mm -hmm. And people don't question it. But GOAT is greatest of all time. Can it be multiple GOATs? Yeah, I think it could be multiple GOATs. Um, but I think you have to allow the people to dictate that and then you condone it, if that makes mm. sense. Like, like, Let's say Jordan. Let's say LeBron. Right. If they would have started out calling themselves the goat, I mean, it's cool because it's, it's you being confident in yourself. But when the people call you that, yeah, and then you run with it, that's a whole different conversation. Nah, right. Um. So I just think as long as the people and the community and your peers and other people in your workforce and other people that look up to you and 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 everybody of that nature call you that then I think it's cool. Like, I think if I would have came in the game, or even now, if I would have started calling myself that and and nobody would back it or or the community didn't do it first or the people didn't call me that first, I don't think it'll be taken how it's taken now. Like, because mm. not one person has ever questioned anybody saying that or me saying it. So, yeah. But if I would have came out the gate, yeah, I'm the GOAT, I'm the GOAT, with no experience, no proof, nothing showing for it, right. then niggas would be like, what the fuck do you think this is? Yeah. No resume, mm -hmm. right? Agreed. I feel like um, 
I want to start from the beginning, almost okay. like a biography. Man, we might be here for a second. That's cool. I got nothing but time, man. Um, it's long overdue. Yo, what made you move to Atlanta in the first place? <sighs> 15 years old, old as a five. My mom wanted to move from D.C. How old was your mom? My mom at that time, I don't even know. This is super important, though. She was like, what's this? 2015, I was 15. She was probably like 33, 34. Okay. That makes sense, though. Yeah. So she, she was kind of grind. She was chasing a dream too, kinda. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't even say chasing a dream. I just think she wanted change for me and my younger siblings. Um, like. I mean, you know how the city is. D D D C is a immaculate city. Mm -hmm. um, the D M V is incredible, and there's nothing like home. There would never be anything like home. But growing up, where where I grew up at, a lot of motherfuckers don't make it out. Mm. And if they make it out, they ain't doing what they supposed to do. Right. So at the time, I really felt the type of way. Like I I. I didn't. It didn't sit right with me and my mom with her making a decision for probably like five, six years, mm. just because before I moved, like I'm one of the top basketball players, football. Like I did everything in DC, recreation, AAU. So now I got to move to a whole nother state, start all over when coaches already got their players, whatever the case may be. So like I just I felt the type of way for a long time. But then after everything started to get in motion, I'm like, oh, I understand. Mm. And not that it was better, but it was just different. Mm. And at that time, different was good for me. I was 15, 16 years old, 10th grade. Like, different was just needed at that time. Mm. Okay, so y'all move down here. You you go to high school. Mm -hmm. When you move down here at 15, 16, you pretty much like, you know, you – you from D.C. at this point. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you fresh out of D.C., mm -hmm. coming to Atlanta, how was it? Like, what I was mean, the first thing you thought about? I mean, everything was different. Um, every single thing was different. The first thing is they dress different. Facts. Um, talk different. Talk yeah. different, <laughs> yeah. The music is different. Um, so when I first came out here, like, I'm just observing. I'm in school. Mind you, D.C., we're Nike boots, we're New Balances, we're Adidas, the colorful ones, not the regular colors with mm -hmm. the sneakers unlaced. Out here, it's more Air Force Ones, Jabos, Tall Tees at that time. Like, there wasn't even an H&M here when I moved to Georgia. Damn. So I'm just like, like, and being from up top, like, we up top people always dress a certain type of way. So it was just different in that aspect. Then even the 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 lingo was different down here. The music was so different. Like Atlanta expanded me as a person when it comes to music. Mm. Because in DC, all I knew was go go, mm. go go, and I maybe what I mean. Of course, the the usuals. Everybody that's from the city, but like outside of that, it was Wayne and go go. That all I listened to. No, so it was like they just expanded and 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 broadened my horizon. When it came to the music aspect. Okay. So when did you know when did you get into hosting? Two thousand twelve, thirteen ish. Okay. Um yeah, two thousand twelve, thirteen ish. Uh I transferred, I played college basketball, played high school, played all sports in high school, uh went to play basketball in college. I transferred the school that I transferred to, coach got fired that was recruiting me the day that I got on campus. They wanted me to be a walk on and my pride just wouldn't allow it at that time. So, wait, you was hosting back home? No, I wasn't hosting back home at all. So, wait, when you come down here, 20? I came down here 20, 2007. Okay, 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you was 15 when you came here? Yeah, I was 15 years old. All right, old. I'm thinking you said 2000. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm like, how? This guy. All right, bad, bad. That makes sense. So, you, you start hosting. And, like, what is it? Like, where you look? Who was the people you looking at? Was it Kenny Burns? I'm assuming it had to be, right? Nah, no? to be completely honest, like, I really didn't look up to nobody. Like, I if I if if it was it was just like your big G's it was niggas that was in DC mm. not really as hosts but they're the lead mic for the go-go bands okay yeah okay. but it really wasn't even that because in DC I wasn't going to the go-go's I was 15 years old yeah so it was more along the lines of like I was a people's person so the shit just came with time so you ain't um, you had to see it though right to, to know that you wanted to do it or nah just... it just happened because when I first came out here like it was all sports right and I didn't go to the clubs. Like, I didn't go to no clubs that people hosted, or at least I didn't know they was a host at that time. But right. 
I didn't go to clubs like that when I first came down here. It was just all sports, all sports, all sports. And then when I finally got into hosting, like, everybody was, nobody little bro me. Mm. Nobody took me under their wing. Facts, bro. But that, I think, what do you think that was a time thing, a time period thing? Because I feel like it was the same for me. Everybody became instant rivals. Like, they said idol standards and rivals. It just instantly became that for some reason. Yeah, but I don't even think it was a time thing. I think, I, I just, I, I don't even know what to call it because I've always told myself, and even from that day that I became who I am, like, I give every young nigga the game. That's Like, what, every single young nigga, radio nigga, young nigga that want to be a host, any nigga that look up to me, I give the nigga the game. And it, they can all see it. That's what I'm saying. And I, I said, I've seen it with my, my, my young guy, Mace. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I asked it's a time thing because I got the same experience. Like, when I came, it wasn't nobody that came and be like, yo, let me show you the game. If anything, niggas, they was acting scared because they ain't want, they were still trying to compete with it. It's like, bro, we, we yeah. can still all eat. But as you see, when you get older, you giving niggas the game. Same yeah, for it, me, same for the people that I'm around. They doing the same thing. It's only right, though, because it's like my legacy can never live on if I'm not bringing young niggas up, up under me. Facts. Like, and, and I and I always told myself, when niggas not giving me the game, when niggas not taking me under their wing, I'm going to always give a young nigga the game now. You can run and take the game how you want to take it. You can X yourself out or you can succeed, but that's all on you. But, like, man, there's – Countless any young nigga that is younger than me on radio or want to be a host, the nigga then probably came to me for game and I didn't gave it to him. It's right. that simple. Even with like what people probably don't see is handing niggas the mic at the club. Mm-hmm. People don't even see. People don't even understand how big of an opportunity that is. Like niggas wasn't doing that, bro. Yeah, no, nobody ever did that. To <laughs> like me. nobody was doing that. ever. <laughs> if I was in the club with a nigga that was hosting, he wasn't even attempting to look my way. Bro, it was, cr- but I, that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to unpack, though. What's the difference? You gotta talk to me. Like I know we ain't gonna say. Let's talk. Let's I mean, talk I'm, 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 to be very transparent, the difference is I'm very confident in my capabilities. Not one Come nigga on. on this earth can take my job. Not oh. one nigga on this earth can take my job. To be very transparent. Oh, so God. me giving a young nigga a mic ain't gonna hinder me. Ain't gonna hurt me. Oh, bro. Me nigga, me putting a nigga on or giving a nigga game don't mean that it's gonna hurt my game. Did you reach out to niggas? Nah, for what? I don't think I, I I'm I'm a young nigga coming up. If, if you see talent or if you see a young nigga going on the right path and ain't out here doing no dumb shit, I shouldn't have to reach out to nobody. Yeah, I mean that's like true. prime example. If I see a young nigga now, like like let's take Mace for instance. Mm-hmm. If Mace was in this city doing what he was trying to do and et cetera, and I seen it, then it'll be a whole different conversation. I fuck around and reach out to him. But Mace wasn't in this city. Mace came to here to meet me at a club and just so happy he walked up to me in a club like, hey, I want to do what you do. I've been watching you, blah, blah, blah. I gave a nigga my number right there and then took the nigga under my wing. So it's like I didn't seen people even try to get into the game. And I'll even if the, it's not even me reaching out, it's just me being and I'm not even an OG, but it's me being a real nigga and putting them up on game like, hey, you doing this. You should be doing this. You need to do this. You sounded like this. You need to sound like this. Create your own sound. You need to become a need, not a want. So it was like, I just always told myself that I wouldn't be one of those. And I said that anybody's bitter because each generation is different. But I wouldn't be a bitter old nigga. Mm. I will never be that. Yeah. I, I'm not, it's crazy because, like, the fact that you ain't reach out to nobody, like, it, for me it was the opposite. I, I reached out to everybody. See, I got to. It, it, everybody. With, with me, it's pride, though. Like, like. Like it is it's it's not even not even ego, it's 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 more it's more of pride. Like yeah. me knowing I'm coming up, me knowing I'm rocking crowds and, and knowing that radio's reaching out and et cetera. A old just just in my mind, somebody who's a vet in the game, I'm gonna be like, damn, let me put this nigga under my wing. He's a young nigga coming up. He can teach me how to still be youthful. Then when I leave I can pass the torch to him. You know how big that'll make a nigga legacy? Mm-hmm. And there's no there let me let me let me not say that. There's one person that I've seen do it, which is Greg. Greg, Greg Street, Street on the radio aspect. He okay. did he did it with Ferrari Simmons. Yeah. Outside of that, I haven't seen it. Kenny Burns did it with Ferrari Simmons also. Let, let me not. But okay. outside of that, I really haven't seen it. I see niggas doing it now. Yeah. I nah, you're right. I'm with you. I think, but I'm asking that because like do you have that, like, fuck you, desire, that burn? Because I got it. I'm not going to lie. I reached out to everybody. I'm like, nah, fuck y'all niggas now. Yeah, I, I I, I, have it. You do? And I had it. Okay. But it'll never show. For sure. Like, For like, sure. like, I've had the, 
and 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 even in old interviews, you'll you'll see it. niggas will ask me, hey, have you had a mentor? Did you have a big brother that showed you the game? Did anybody take you under their wing? And it's like, nah. And now that I'm on, fuck y'all niggas. But now it's different because it's like I'm on now. You successful? Y'all couldn't stop it, yeah. so it's cool. We we can be cordial. But now you can't little bro me. I'm on your level now. For sure. You can't try to sun me. Mm, and and, mm, and and that's a way better feeling than having a fuck you mentality when a nigga know he had the opportunity to help you or or help you become better and he did it and then you're now on his level or past him. Fuck can a nigga say? Nothing. Everybody always got advice when you come in or like mm. telling you how to what you should and should do, man. Fuck you. Man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I was wondering because like, it gotta be there because like niggas ain't really and it's crazy because the the story is such the same and that's just pitiful, bro. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm happy that the niggas that come up under you uh, under me shit under the niggas that's next to us Ferrari, you feel me? They not gonna have that same story. Yeah, nah, hell nah. Like and Ferrari doing the same thing. Like he he got a he he got a bunch of young niggas on his wing. And like I said, I see people are doing it now, but it took some it, it took motherfuckers like us you, to change yeah. the narrative. For sure. And and as long as that's happening now, then I'm all good with it. Like like I said, it's not a fuck you. It's not a. There's no resentment. There's no hate. I mean, you just gotta see things from everybody's standpoint. And I get it. I mean, because back then in those times, it was every man for themselves. Mm. Like there was only one way to be one person. Mm. Now there's so many different outlets and so many different ways. A billion motherfucking hosts can still be a billion hosts, and everybody can eat. So it's like I get it, but I don't accept. it. Yeah, all right, cause I'm about to say, bro. Even back then, a bit they, I feel like, not to get into this, this, this just young versus the old, but they kind of fucked the game up. Like coming up, niggas was saying like, bro, what's the name of take this? It should never be that. Yeah, but it, it's take it's, it, get get him then. It, it's 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 <laughs> always gonna be like that. But see, that's that's that's, and I don't even think it's the old niggas. I just think that's the promoter world. I think that's the that's the, and not even owners, but like that's just that's them trying to see if you gonna stand on what you stand on. Cause the nigga tell me that okay cool bye right like go holla it's cool yeah, like like I ain't gonna say nothing bad about yeah, him or nothing for like what <laughs> but it's like like but but that's that's just motherfuckers trying to save expenses I mean I I I get it but I don't condone it like mm. yet again I'm gonna stand on what I stand on my price is my price you want to go get somebody else so be it I'm not gonna lose no sleep facts oh cap I think it's easy to think that now or the, or the like even you said like in your, your early interviews you hear you heard that like. The frustration behind it because you was climbing. Mm -hmm. Now you here. It's like, yo, can't nobody say nothing. Yeah, and I mean, I had that mentality back then, but it was just like I was immature. Like it was like, okay, fuck this nigga, fuck this nigga, fuck this person. But it's like, I mean, it's cool now. Mm. Is it really cool it's, though? Yeah, because it's not. Well, pu and public is cool. No, public and private. It's cool. Okay. Like it's 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 nothing. It's nothing a nigga can say to me that I haven't already accomplished mm. that they ain't done or already done. Facts. So it's like, what what am I arguing with you for? What am I going back and forth with you for? Like, there's nothing to talk about. That's true. So who who, who some of the people you studying now? Um, I wouldn't say studying. Um, just because, and I don't want this to be taken the wrong way, but like, I don't watch other people. Mm. Like, I like to create my own. Mm. So it's like, like there's people that. I see like a Ryan Seacrest, a Terrence J, a, a Nick Cannon. Like I see what they're doing, and I want to take what they're doing and make it fly guy DC ish. No, for sure. So, I, but but I, it ain't like like I don't study. I've never studied people. Like even in the game of basketball, like I never study people. It's just I make it work for me how it needs to work because I'm creating my own lane. Mm. Like there's people who led the way. There's people who are in position, and there's goats, of course, in this realm, but. I'm creating my legacy for me to be a goat. I don't want I don't want nobody to ever be like, oh yeah, you remind me of not even you remind me. You sound like, mm -hmm. oh, but well, this person did this and you did it too. Like I don't want th there should never be no comparison with me and anybody else in my field. Mm -hmm. And that's just something I stand on. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want when I, when 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 TV happens, I don't want motherfuckers to compare me to Nick Can Nick Cannon is a goat. He's a goat. I want to create my own lane. Right. Like, I don't even want to, not saying that the comparison is a bad thing or a good thing. I just don't want to be compared to nobody. You know it's inevitable, though. Yeah, no, I get it. But but that's that's the that's the issue. And, and that's what creates all these narratives where all these OGs feeling the type of way. Because mm. it's like they're on their way out or trying to still be relevant to the to the youthful demo. But you got everybody in their ear talking about, oh, yeah, this young nigga remind me of you. This remind me of you. And that could that could start some resentment right there. That's only for the bums. 
Sorry. I mean, no, it's not. It's just it's just for certain people. Because even the other day watching, was it yesterday, watching uh, LeBron break the all-time scoring mm-hmm. record, right? But Okay, prime example. And you had all the older people who seen Jordan, who, who watched Kareem. Oh, he's still not the greatest of all time. Oh, he don't have this many rings. It's always going to – you're never going to be able to please everybody. For sure. Like, no. you're never – and and yet again, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Me, personally, I didn't grow up watching Jordan. Mm. I don't think Jordan's a GOAT. I think – back then was totally different. Mm. I think the game today is played totally different. Now, I do believe you can have different goats in different generations, but you ain't about to sit here and tell me that an all-time leading scorer, number one, and fourth on the all-time leading assist is not a fucking goat. No, I don't give a fuck how many rings he got. Like it, But that's just me and my mentality. But you have people who watched Jordan, played with Jordan, mother used to obsess with Jordan, like that will never change their opinion, and that's cool. Mm. Jordan definitely a goat though. Agree, agree. He definitely a goat. But I, I, I personally think there, there, there's, there's, you can, there, there can be more than one goat in the field. For sh- no, for sure. Like LeBron, I think what I personally think, I think niggas just hate greats. No matter I what, mean, when Jordan was come up, people hated Jordan. Yeah, agree. You know what I'm saying? Like every time it's a great, people hate him. Is but I, I, I root for the great because like, it's like I almost see myself in him. Honestly, I'm mm-hmm. not even gonna lie. Like, I, like it's like, bro. I can see me breaking records and doing all of that shit. So I know niggas gonna hate me too. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I feel like the same with you. Um, but that's why I was saying I feel like I don't know. Like people comparing you to the greats, like like Nick Cannon, Ryan Seacrest, like they some great names to be amongst. Them. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, and and I never take it lightly. Like respectfully, like it 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 feels good. But I just I just always been that type. Like I just don't want to be compared. Like. I'm building my legacy. Mm. I'm building me. I'm building Fly Guy DC. I'm building that brand. Like, yeah, something might be similar, but the way I'm doing shit, nobody else is doing it. They can't even be touched. That's what. I'm, so you can't really compare me. Mm. Like, it, it just it, it. And yet again, like it's a blessing. Yeah. But I just, me personally, I just don't like it. Bro, I love sitting next to you right now, bro. It's just like, I wish people could understand that the two could exist together. I feel like we go wrong because people feel like it can't be a yeah attitude. Like, I feel like people look at it like, yeah attitude got to demote somebody else. And mm-hmm. that's not true. Yeah, no, nah, not like, at that's all. That's so but not true. At, sad to say, but that's just the world we live in. Like, it, it, it's always comparison. It's always this or that. It's hot or cold. It's 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 up or down. Like, it, that's, just, that's just the world we live in. And it's only going to get worse. Mm-mm-mm. It's only going to get worse. Yeah, like, LeBron just broke the fucking scoring record. You had people saying, "Oh well, Kareem still got more rings. Oh, he don't have more rings than Jordan." Like my nigga, let the nigga live in this accomplishment. Oh, facts. And honestly, I was talking to somebody um not too long ago, and they was like, yeah, "I'm not chasing to be the best because like, what does that really mean?" And it made me think, like, I mean, what does it mean, honestly, <laughs> to be the best? Like, to be the absolute best because it's always going to be. Arguably, somebody like people always going to try to debate who is who is and who is not, right? Mm-hmm. So, what does it mean to be the best? I mean, I just personally think it it depends on on what field you're talking about. Um, um, of course, accolades come along with that, right? Um, of course, notoriety comes along with that. Um, I mean, a a a, a lot comes along with being the best, but the biggest thing that I think that comes with being the best is you as your tree branch, you as your tree stump, how many branches did you help branch off? Come on, man, let's go. And 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 that's what I think sets motherfuckers apart from, oh, yeah, he's a great, oh, but he's the best, or he's the GOAT. Like, mm. who did you help? Who did you inspire? Like, like prime example, Greg Street. And then got 30 generations of radio under him. Mm. He's inspired people younger than me, people older than me, people older than older than them. Like, he's a great in radio. Like, he's a GOAT. Yeah. And there's nothing you can take from him. If you if you start a tree right now and, and he's the tree stump in a tree, he has a billion branches on his tree. Mm. That's what I personally think makes you a great. And if you don't have no branches on your tree or if nobody can testify that you helped them along their way or that you gave them game or that you put them in a position to make some money or be a better dinner, better them, I don't think you're a goat. I don't think you're a great. That's hard. That's a sound bite right there. That's going to go crazy. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, that was hard. No, I like it, bro. That's crazy. Um, 
let's transition to this radio thing. I'm gonna go. We're gonna be all over the it's place. Cool. Look, I got time. We got time, right, Justin? You got time? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Where do I want to start with this radio stuff, bro? Let's go. Just let go straight into it. You just, you just. What, what happened? You quit? You fired? You got? What happened? No, no. You didn't I, get fired. I, right? I won't ever get fired from any job. Let's just go ahead and be very transparent. Um, I won't ever get fired. You don't think so? Nah. Damn. I don't. I won't ever get fired. Why and not? that's Why not even so? me being cocky. That's just me knowing my work ethic, knowing my talent, and knowing what I bring to the table every single day that I go into a job. Mm. You have no reason to fire me. And if you fire me, you're a damn fool. For sure. But first and foremost, salute the streets. Thank you for everything they gave me. My start in radio. But, I mean, there just comes a time and a place where you outgrow something. And I just saw better, not better, but I saw more for my brand. Mm. And it couldn't be done there. It, it it couldn't be amplified. I felt like I was at a standstill. Mm. Um, That's really it. I mean, we, we, no fire, none of that. Like, I decided to part ways because the negotiations, we couldn't come to a term. Okay. So that's there what, it, yeah, like we just couldn't come to an agreement on negotiations. All right. They thought one thing, I thought another thing. We were negotiating and it didn't make sense for them. And what they offered didn't make sense for me. So I decided to walk away. Lamar Jackson, basically. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. I mean, that makes sense. Cause when, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> when you say, when you say, uh, you saw bigger for your brand. I'm like, yeah, but not not in the sense now, of like, just now. Like, what? yeah, but 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 it but it takes time. Like you got to think. That's like being at a club for five years, and then this club only holds 500 people, but your brand has elevated, and now it's a new club right down the street that hold 2,000 people, mm. and they want you, and they're packed out every night. Like you have to elevate your brand. With time mm. comes elevation, and it's like nothing was wrong in streets. Mm. I could be Fly Guy DC. I had creative control. I could run a record back 30 times on the radio and not one person say nothing. All of the radio aspect of things was was incredible. Mm. I just felt I needed a break from them because it wasn't making sense mm. financially. Yeah, it was not making sense. Yeah, like it, it just wasn't making sense. With a and, C. And, and all of my friends left. Mm. So with them being there and it not making sense financially, it was cool. Because my friends are there. We're fucking the city up together. Facts. But with all my friends gone, and now it don't make sense financially, okay, now I need the financials, or it's just not going to make sense for me. Yeah. No, I and I think, let's go back for a second. I can run a record back 30 times and nobody not saying nothing. We got to set the stage, bro, because people not understanding <laughs> what that mean. Like, wait, you can't just throw that out there. You worked hard to get to that spot, because it's a point where you can't even... Th th Throw one song going there without mm -hmm. a nigga calling. Like, what is you doing? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Looking back on it, before we even get to the present, looking back on those times where you probably got in trouble for, it's going to sound crazy now, right? In hindsight. I can give for, you a whole fucking list. For, for dropping a, a little baby. Facts. For, for dropping a uh, maybe even a future, maybe Facts. even a young thug. Facts. <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion. Gonna. Key, Ayo and Teo, anybody you can fucking think of, Derez Deshaun, like mm. Lil Uzi, like mm, mm, mm. It, it was trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble. But they started to see that what we were doing, we were turning out to be right. We was just six months early, a mm. year early. So they let the slack off. And How long for, did that take? For the slack to come off? Maybe a year. A uh, year? It's not bad, relative. A year? No, like, it's, since it's, you, like, when you started so to... I, so, we, me and Farai got our show in 2017. 2018, the slack started to, to come off. But that is bad. You got to think, we on the radio five days a week. There's new records that come out. There's new artists that come out damn near every day. Mm. So, we're breaking three, four records, five, six records. Yo, so, and radio a year is not bad. It is. It is. You think so? It is when you got the ear that you have, when you know you could break the records that you break and you have the clubs on lock. So you got to think, like, records that there, we had a limit on how many we can break. What was your time slot? Six to ten. Bro, that's not bad. It is bad because don't no radio station let you do that. That's what I'm No, no radio station letting you play whatever you want to play. Agreed, but that's what I'm saying. We're in Atlanta. We control the narrative. Yeah, we yeah. control the culture. Yeah. So what we do, other stations follow. Facts. When we break a record, they go research it and then put it on their airwaves. That's true. So if we're setting the tempo and 
they're not allowing us to set it how we need to set it, which they were. They were, but it was limited. Mm. So you got to think, we get a, say for instance, we get a little, it's, it's a Friday, we get a little baby record, a gunner record, a thug record, a future record, a key record, a dirk record. We only can break one or two of the motherfuckers. Mm. But all six of the motherfuckers are bangers. Yeah. Because you're so, in the club and you know. But that's the thing. That's so. That's what I'm saying. Like, by us being in a club and for it to take a year is long because we proved our track record with the first three, four months of breaking records. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially the, the Atlanta point was gold. That's kind of like, honestly, it's kind of like being in New York mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, Atlanta is what? I don't know what number. Number seven. Like, number seven. That's crazy. Number I mean, seven in the market. Facts. And then it, for for all those that don't know, it it don't even go by by what the market is doing. It goes by the population. Mm. So the 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 biggest markets, of course, you have L.A., New York. Yep. Then you got Chicago third. Then you got Dallas. Then you got D.C. and then Atlanta seven. But it goes by population rather than the motion that's in the city. And then D.C. is only top ten because of a lot of news. Honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the population. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of news radio. When mm -hmm. we talk about radio, yeah. not even just urban. Like, it's a lot of news. But, nah, it, that's crazy that you say that because that's a fact, bro. Like, y'all setting the pace for, like, other stations, especially when we going down the list, number 20, 21, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Sheesh, bro. So you got to think, now without the two people that set the pace for the city, not on those airwaves. I mean, but everybody, man, though, what I hear, um, well, not everybody, but I hear uh, DJ Khaled's story. I didn't even know he was like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was getting in trouble for breaking records. Mm -hmm. And I think he might have been doing it overnight, maybe. Yeah. For you to be doing it 6 to 10. We put our job on the line. If we believe in something, we believe in it. And that's the thing. Like, there's plenty of radio personalities that take money. Mm. None, it was never none of that was with us. We like a record, we like it. You can't pay us to break a record. That's another reason why you, you stayed around so long, yeah, though, too. Yeah, yeah. Because niggas can't like, you, you can't, you over. Yeah, like, and, and, and niggas know. Like, niggas know they can't pay Neil for right to break a record. Nah, that's for what? Hard. I mean, but also, we got to give some some credit to Streets, though, because yeah. aren't they relatively new? I'm not too sure. Yeah, they're like, I mean, out of everybody in Atlanta, they're the North State. Well, no, they're, yeah, they're the North Station outside of iHeart, but they, 10 years, that's new for a radio station, though. And they're on iHeart? No, 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 they no. Independent, they independent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I mean, yeah, y'all had a lot of leeway because I was in Radio 1. It was terrible. I mean, not say that. I need I mean, still need to. <laughs> I ain't never been to Radio 1. <laughs> I haven't been on I mean, Radio 1. Let me not say too much, but shit, I'm going to have my own shit. Fuck it. But nah, yeah. it's just. I mean, Screech was, Screech was dope. I mean, it was, it was, and, 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 a, and, a, and a radio vet and a radio hall of fame told me that in your radio span, in, at, in your life of radio, if you're on a radio, you're going to be at least four to six stations mm. out your whole radio life. So if that was my first station, I think I, I excel with Flying Cup. For sure. For sure. You did that. Um, you went as a dude named uh, YS, Young Scholar. Scholar. No, yeah, never. he's in um, like Birmingham, I think. Uh, he's fire, too. Y'all got me, bro. He's great energy just Skyler? like Skyler. Yeah, Young Scholar's like YS Baby on Instagram. Oh, yeah. They yeah. had him. Uh, when I took a two-month break, they had him. At the station, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. He was doing six ten. Definitely a, a pretty dope person too, man. Shout out to my guy. But uh, yeah, bro. I mean, if that's your first one, it's only going up from yeah, there. Yeah, so that's why like it ain't it ain't no rush. It ain't no I'm chilling. Like, so you liking radio? I mean, of course, your experience is way radio. different. I, I I I love radio. Um, the community is everything, mm. and being able to touch people over the airwaves, and people walking up to me, I listen to you every day. You got me through this. You got me through that. Like, that, that shit is the greatest feeling ever. So, like, I don't ever want to leave radio. Like, I'm going to be like a Steve Harvey. Mm. Like, I, Nick can't, like, I'm not going to leave radio. Another thing is, they gave you, I think you touched on this, they gave you the freedom to be you, though. Bro, do you understand how good you had? I don't think you understand how no, good you I, had it. I get it, but all those perks still don't amount to... A person's mental. What you mean? Meaning like everything is just like being in a relationship. Everything could be all glitter and glow gold, but if you're mentally out of it, you're out of it. There's nothing that can that can remotely bring you back into it. Don't you know how when you hear they be like, uh, what what they be saying about the girls? Like like she's in it but she's been gone. Mm, yeah, for sure. It's it's yeah. just like that. Like 
Like she been gone before she break up. Yeah, with but yeah. So yeah. that that's just how that was. And like I said, nothing against them. Like I, I just I mentally I just couldn't do it. It was Why? too much stress. It, it's 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 a lot. Like I mean, just in general, like you've been already a one. That's a corporation. That's a Fortune 500. So even to put it in in context or in a better form, a Fortune 500 and you're dealing with an independent black owner. Like there's pros and cons. Like like. It, there, there's a lot that the outside would never see, and it's not for me to tell. But it just mentally, like it was just draining, mm. and my and and my mental and my stress and and my my peace mm. is more important than anything that goes on in my fucking life. Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines. Man, he's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses. Right? He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, Right. They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Nah, for sure. Isn't it crazy how big the world is and how like so many different spectrums we could stand on mm -hmm. right people probably looking at you like man i would love because i'm looking at you doing you dropping your interviews on your youtube right mm -hmm. oh my god that's yeah. it but see it, it, but see I, I know the business side of things so like even if let, let, to be very transparent like the fly guy dc show <laughs> that's trademark correct <laughs> that's mine yeah the segments mine mm. so when I do an interview, you can't tell me I can't upload it to my YouTube. Mm. Where you did you learn that though? Trademarking I mean, it. Just, I mean, just to be completely honest, like I've always been business smart, mm. but like I just know how shit can be because when I first started, started off as a host, I found a website in my name that wasn't me. Mm. So from there, it was just like, okay, let me get my shit together. Let me make sure I trademark, I copyright everything. So like, it's just little stuff. Like, even with me, even with me leaving radio, every artist that has ever wanted to sit down with me still wants to sit down with me. I'm, it doesn't have to be at a radio station. I'm trying to figure out when you're gonna start a podcast. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> the space is open Everybody for you, bro. Just let me know. You can have it, my man. Hey, the, the the podcast world is incredible, but I it, I just mine just has to be so so different like mm. and don't get me wrong like everybody has reached out i got plenty of concepts plenty of ideas but i'll never push the gas on something until it's perfected that makes sense i'm gonna because tell you if i get in it i gotta run it but you can though yeah but i don't think i can run it right now at this point because i'm not going to be 100 percent in it mm. my, my heart is not 100 percent in podcasts okay all right that makes sense because i'm thinking like as a as a black independent man Period. I mean, gonna lie to you. Like, I, I was talking to one of my dudes that uh, he has a business down here. I was like, bro, you gotta holler at Fly Guy DC. I could have easily said me, but I'm just not no hater, and I just, mm -hmm. bro, I'm real. Like, I, man, I give props where it's due. You feel me? And I'm like, bro, if this dude started a podcast, it would be crazy because he got the relationship. I'm literally saying this. Yeah, like I can't. I and, and it, but it ain't even about the relationships. Like, it just gotta make sense for me, for my time financially like i've had opportunities to be on so many of the but it just don't make sense and it's like i'm just to the point of my career now and if it don't make sense i don't move mm. like i'm just at that point that's interesting that you say that because like with the relationships that you have it could make sense like a lot of sense yeah it can but if the if if, if financially it ain't making sense up front i don't want nothing to do with it why am i why am i calling Lil dirk baby future or prime example on the road i could have been in fucking i could have did a fucking uh my isolation insider that's something that i did during COVID. isolation insider tour edition and interviewed every artist on the road and uploaded it but or, or put it on the podcast but why because it's going to get you a bag yeah but no 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 the bag needs to come out my resume and experience is already there the bag needs to come and then i'll show y'all what i can do y'all know what i can do 
So you wouldn't do that on your own, just independently? No. So you don't like when somebody pay, when somebody pays me to do it, it's not the same. Mm. It's not new and it's not fresh. If I go do everything that's in my notes and in my in my book to 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 do, and my regular fans see it and et cetera, now if somebody else get it, it's like damn. So when you look at like a, a Gilly and Wallow situation, mm -hmm. they started independent, then mm -hmm. they got signed by Barstool. Yeah, but when they started independent, Gilly and Wallow was getting a bunch of bags already, and before before even the bags. They had a relationship and they were doing it for a total different reason. Mm. Both of them were street niggas, wanted to give the young niggas game. Facts. One just got out of jail, so it made complete sense. And that was a build process. But listen to it, a build process. I'm not in a building stage no more with my career. <laughs> this is so hard, bro. Like, I was going to ask, do you think that come from experience, right? But do you think that experience sometimes hinder the growth, as crazy as it sounds? To a T, but I don't think so. I don't think a, a experience helps you see things for what they are. Like, I don't think a, a person's experience can hinder them because they just know their worth. And when you stand on principles, then everything is just different. Like, a nigga can't come up to me and be like, yeah, I got $100,000. I need you to start this podcast. I need an episode every week. I need, I need four episodes a month. No, my nigga. Mm. That's too much of my time. And $100,000 ain't worth it. No, facts. After taxes, after me paying whatever I got to pay, after me buying a studio, after me setting up paying cameraman, it ain't worth it. Nah, because you're going to lose, man. Honey. My point exactly. Yeah. So I, there's no profit. See, but I ask that because it could, if you did it independently, right? And yeah, you probably would have to do some groundwork. But if you went hard, you could get that thing running in six months and you could be making bank just independently. Yeah, but you've got to think about it like this. Do I have six months to sit on my ass and build a podcast? Mm. No. I'm on the road. I still got community stuff. I still do hostings. I don't have six months to be scrambling to fulfill a dream that is not even my dream. Facts. That's hard. I, I, lo I love this this, this conversation because, like, it's just – it's hard, bro. I, um, Just a little bit about me. Like, when I came out here, everybody was like, you're going to start hosting – and I ain't gonna lie, I was like, bro, I'm in my own way. It's hard, I can't. So that's what I'm saying. So you can't. I, I get what you say. <laughs> like when I say I get it, it's like, bro, niggas, like, bro, it's like, cause I understand, it's like, bro, I'm not going back, bro. Like yeah. I, I didn't grind in Baltimore. I didn't grind and got my name up, and I was making good money to come down here to start off. I'm not doing that. Yeah, and don't like, get I'm me not wrong. Doing, I can't like, do that, bro. The, the, the podcast area is immaculate like the shit is incredible no i get it but if it ain't you what i mean yeah like and and not even the sense of it ain't me it just gotta make sense like i just know what i bring to the table in any situation that doesn't benefit me like it should i'm gonna walk away from it hence why i walked away from the radio mm. like if i do a podcast bro like i can call anybody and get a sit down interview from athletes to artists to singers to rappers to actors i can call anybody so if the average podcast can't do that why am I building for six months when I know for a fact somebody's going to come around in a sense or in time and be like, hey, we want you to do this? Not saying that they already have it, but it's like an offer what I deserve. Because I'm looking at it like, oh, I'm looking at it like forget everybody that can offer you anything. I'm looking at it like just you. You call anybody like you don't need. This is just me looking at you just from somebody who's just giving you respect. You know what I'm saying? Bro. The only reason, hypothetically, these companies paying people is for ad dollars. They know Agreed. they can get ad dollars. Agree. You literally don't need no company because if you can get the person, you can get the ad dollars. You can make your own six figures Agreed. a so, show. So prime example, my YouTube, all my interviews averaging three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand, radio or not radio, mm -hmm. four hundred thousand easily. Now, if I do this and take the time to do it myself, that means I got to find a space. Mm -hmm. If somebody come in, they're finding the space. Mm -hmm. That mean I gotta get equipment. Somebody come in, they're getting equipment. Okay. That mean I gotta hire people. Somebody come in, they're they hiring people. You don't gotta do nothing. I don't right. have to do nothing. I, I just gotta it. show up and do it. You tired? It sound like not even tired. <laughs> it it's just like I'm tired of I shit. don't, I don't have the energy to put in to start from jump for that specific situation. But if somebody is gonna do everything and I just set up the interviews and and show up, that's a whole different conversation. Mm. That makes sense. Damn, bro.
Shit, you can have this shit. Give me 10%. <laughs> just give me like 10%. Why are you playing? When I walked in here, what did I say, Justin? I said, look, this shit is kind of dope. Hey, I'm just saying, I, hey, we got to stay the art. We got like real, no, this, this is real this, shit right no, here. Yeah, this shit is extremely dope. Hey, that's, saying, that's why I asked you, how much was it to, to be in this motherfucker? Hey, you can, I record, you, you can record on the other days. Like, give me like 10%. I don't even want none of your interviews. Do your own thing separately. Take all this shit down when you want to record, bro. Just give me like 10%. I'm mm. talking business. You feel me? Nah, this this shit is dope. Like, dead ass. You feel me? I literally just asked Justin. I was like, yo, what? I throw the team in there too. We'll break it down. <laughs> We're going to break the bread down. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Yeah, but like like, like I said, the podcast space is a, is a great area. But like, and, it, and I think podcast is the way to go. Like, I think very, very soon your Amazon, your Spotify, your Apples are going to buy radio stations and combine them. And mm. they're going to be on digital plat. Like, I... That's what the world is coming to. Mm. So it's like, but my passion is for radio, not for podcasts. Like, I can be myself on radio and do what everything that a podcast is doing. Like, prime example, nothing against no podcast, but if I interview somebody, I'm still getting the views. I can literally pull the audio if I want to and then upload it. But yeah. yet again, that's just not the space I want to be in, at least at this point in my career. No, that makes sense. I... I I'm 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 wishing you nothing but the best, honestly, because like when somebody succeeds and they show the the blueprint, everybody gotta it open the door for so many people. Mm -hmm. And like your situation is just it's just it's just unique, bro. Like a lot of and you you know this. You went for like 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 y'all know that. You know what I'm saying? Like everywhere else in radio, bro, it takes a long time to get to. I'm thinking about the niggas I know, Quicksilver, like, mm -hmm. even like the, it, like, it take a long time for them to be able to be like, nah, I run shit. Yeah, and, 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 I mean, that's, uh, it's a blessing. I mean, like, like, the average span of, of radio for somebody to land their own show or even to be in this, in a space that motherfuckers was in or is in, it, it minimum is like seven years. Mm. Minimum. Like, and that's not even including the intern process before you're hired and all that. Like, board op, maybe. Yeah, like a nigga like me, I ain't ever had board training. I ain't ever was an intern. I ain't ever, none of that shit. Like, so it's like, the shit is a blessing, but mm. shit like that don't, don't happen very, very often. It doesn't. Which it doesn't. is why I'm in the space that I'm at and why my mentality is where it's at. Because if I'm one of the ones out of a billion fucking people that it happened to, Obviously, something about me special. And you gonna open the door for so many more, mm -hmm. for sure. Like I, you gotta, you gotta wish a nigga like that luck though, like success. Mm -hmm. You got to, especially when you've been in and you see how I don't. I got hate in my blood. Fuck all them niggas. Like that's yeah, not. But you, I'm it. telling you, man, not hate gonna, for real, but like it's yeah. But I, even that mentality is it's gonna hinder you, bro. I'm telling you, like I had that mentality for for not these past two years, but. The five years before that, I had that mentality, bro. Like, I had the mentality, fuck you. If you want a problem, it's up and it's stuck when I see you. It's that simple. Like, oh, no, nah, I ain't like, nah, but I ain't I'm just saying, that even the time. hate nah, you. Nah, nah, I ain't on that type of time. Even the hate you, the, the, I don't fuck with this person. I'm telling you, bro, it ain't going to lead you nowhere. And when I had that mentality, my career was stagnant. Like, I wasn't doing what I needed to do. Like, I was mm. stuck at a standstill. Nah, I don't know. I don't think. I think it motivates niggas. It motivated you. I... Yeah, I, yeah. Like it mo you ain't about to sit up here. I get we gonna fuck these cameras, nigga. You ain't gonna sit up here and tell me that it ain't motivate you. No, it, 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 it definitely you. motivated me. But once I became mature, it made me open my eyes and realize. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I told you earlier, like cameras or not, it still fuck a bunch of niggas. <laughs> All right, I was making sure you. Yeah, you it still you fuck still a bunch of niggas. Like point blank, period. All right, just make but, sure there ain't no uh, clone. But but mentally, it's cool, bro. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. They know what it you. is. Nah, I get you. I, I'm, we on the same page. I get you. I get you. I get you. Yo, question. What was like? What, what was the end goal for you when you walked into being a host? Because I, like, I feel like it it couldn't have been just to be a host. What was it? I didn't have an end goal because I didn't want to do this. Like, I was supposed to be overseas playing basketball, bro. Mm. Like, there was no – I have no goals in this shit at all. Mm. Like, because if I get goals and then it don't happen, I'm going to be disappointed. And I can't be disappointed by something that fell into my lap. Mm. So I'm going with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. Like, and I have yet to fucking non-amaze myself. Like every single month, every couple of months, it's something else that'd be like, damn, I really just did this. So it's like it, it, I have no goals, and I don't even want to have no goals with it because then I have expectations, and I don't like to be let down. Mm. Damn, that's a that's a life to live, man. So nothing, 
is whatever happens you happy for. Yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, I have wants, but I wouldn't say it's a goal. Like, I want to be on TV, and that's going to happen. I've been on TV before, but, like, I don't have a goal. It's not like I have a, a board at my house that says I need to be on TV by blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just like TV is going to happen when it's supposed to happen. Like, but outside of that, like, there's nothing that, I mean, and I wouldn't even say this is a goal, but syndication and radio, but that's anybody who's on radio. Like it was right. Yeah, like and you find out they raping you. To a T, but that's, <laughs> but yet again, that's when you don't stand on principles. Yeah, you can't get raped if you stand on principles and you know your worth. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact. And if you, if you, if you, if you worthy of something, mm-hmm. they they only raping the ones they can rape. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But even if a nigga is worthy of syndication and he getting raped, that's an issue because you're syndicated for a reason. Mm-hmm. But the way radio, do they try to finesse? They like, all right, bet this. Everybody, we know everybody wants syndication, so we gonna save money by not hiring people in every market, and we gonna just have one person work all the markets, and it's a finesse. Yeah, it's a finesse to a T. But if that person is is built to 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 stand in that market and and is actually touching that market, then it makes all the sense. Like prime example, streets. They got a station in Charlotte. They got a station in Albany, Georgia, Virginia, and they got a station in Chicago. There's oh. nobody on air in none of those stations but Charlotte. And there was only one person on air. He does three to he does two to six. Mm. Everything else is just all music. Mm. So it ain't hurting the station to add. No, for sure it's not. So it, it just all depends on the on the on the the view that you have with the station and 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 you how you can negotiate and and your worth at that station. Mm. Somebody called me and I, 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 I'm a, uh, I'm gonna send this to them. I'm gonna help somebody else. Somebody called me. <clears throat> they doing a morning show, and they not really getting paid like they should. They right? the main host on the morning show, or is One they a co-host? Them. Yeah, they're co-host. So is, who's is there a lead on the morning show? Yeah, it's a lead. that's bigger than the two co-hosts. Yeah. Okay. And they're they're still like part time. Mm-hmm. And they was asking me like, what do I think? And I was telling them like, it's still a great opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Find something outside of it that you can really do your thing, but still keep that in in your, in your hip. What you think? I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, morning show is the biggest thing in radio, right? Um, and they're not the lead, so they're going to be part time. I um, thought they still be full time though. No, 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 no. If so, so okay, so full time contract and full time is two different things, and mm-hmm. then part time is totally different from both right. of those. No, okay. So usually on your on your and and and. Unless it's a huge exception like the Breakfast Club, all them was on contract. Yeah, but like usually on your morning show, you have one person on contract, the one person full time, one person part time, because it's usually three people on the morning show. Oh wow! Or you can have one main person on the contract. the The second lead is on contract. Then you have like a segment person, which is part time. So if that person is the segment person, then I mean they need to run with that. I mean the morning show is one of the biggest shits that there is, and then even on top of that. If if they need to ask themselves this, and this is something I always ask ask myself, if radio should die today and there's no more radio in the car, can your brand still survive? If your brand still can't survive, then you don't need to be worried about fucking asking for more money or doing whatever. You need to be building that brand outside of the radio station. Mm, great advice. I'm going to send this to that. Because they asked me, I was like, I don't know. I think it's a yeah, great I mean, opportunity. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you're on a morning show, it's, I don't give a fuck what you're doing. Yeah, if you're a, talking on the air, you shouldn't be leaving the fucking morning show. That's a great opportunity. And they're paying you? It, just because it ain't what you want? That's It's so much that can come from that. Sponsors, endorsements, syndication. Like, it's so much that come from being on the morning show. How do you leverage that? How do you leverage what? Yeah, being on the morning show. You said sponsors, uh, things All like that. All you got to do is show them the analytics for you being on the morning show. Mm. Take it to anybody you want to, to endorse you. and. But you can't promote them on... On another on a station without the station getting paid from it, right? Because that's yeah, what but they that's got why your endorsement got to include the station. See, people don't know the business side of things, facts. bro. Like, that's a fact. whenever I got something done with with streets, oh, best believe, Fly Guy DC price was inside of that, mm-hmm. and they know it. Like, but it, it's it's common sense. Nah, a lot of people don't understand. I'll be telling people a lot of people don't understand like the importance of like bringing the company money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying everybody like as much as as dope as it is to like be you. You know what I'm saying? Same in the club. If you're not bringing the establishment money, then they really don't. They can replace you. They can you can be replaceable. You're, replaceable. you're, you're a want, not a need. Exactly. But the moment you start bringing in lawyers, <laughs> sponsors, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's not just about you because the moment you try to make it about you, they're going to see it. And then they're going to start stepping back. It's like, nah. Nah, that's a control. fact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but nah, that, that, it, it, man, it's easy. Every, every company... Every company wants to be on radio. I don't give a fuck who they is. Mm. Everybody wants some type of commercial, some type of shout out, whatever the case may be. So people just got to know how to talk to people. How do you go about that as somebody in radio just 
I don't know, they looking at this and they like, yo, I'm trying to, I'm young dude on radio, I'm trying to get some sponsors for the station so I can get some money, make myself a uh, need. Yeah, but see, they're going about it wrong because you shouldn't even never tell a company that you're going to about a sponsorship or endorsement that you're trying to make yourself a need. You mm. got to go in there walking like you already a fucking need. Mm. Um, and I mean, it's just, like I said, everything is, is analytics. Hey, you give us this amount of money, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get this many commercials. You're going to get this many shout outs. You're going to get this many social media posts. You're going to get this many videos. You're going to uh, be able to come up here and get this many interviews in the duration of six months. Like, you got to you gotta know what you're doing. That's, that's a great, that's, that's great advice. You got to make it to where it makes it seem as the company is benefiting more than a radio station. Mm. I like that. But you would say, you would tell them to go to the, the sponsors or whatever by so themselves. Who? Who? Whoever the young. No, nah, they need to have representation with them. So if they got a team, they got a manager, they got an assistant, whoever, they need to have somebody else with them that can speak on their behalf. So you handle the, uh, the radio as, as much the same you as what you would handle it as independent. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's interesting. Yo, another thing that I thought was dope about you, um, one of the things that the young dudes, I think, well, our generation was able to uh, understand was – you was heavy on getting everything recorded, mm-hmm. like showing everything. Yeah, I think that had a big part of you becoming a fly guy. DC, you are now. Dude. Yeah, like I mean, people just gotta see shit. Like the world that we live in. Like I said earlier, like like people gotta see shit to believe. Mm. And and recording everything, documenting everything. Like I have a end goal. I have a long run. Like that Kanye West documentary. The, the amount of footage I got on, on fucking hard drives from 2012 all the way to now and then continuing once shit continues to go, like, until I'm ready to leave this shit, like, bro, like, that shit is worth money. Mm-hmm. Money. Like, the it, that's some shit a motherfucker can't, you can't pay nobody for. Mm. You can't, Kanye got what? How many millions? It was like a hundred and something millions for that Netflix documentary. And then he gave it to us, or he gave he, he gave it to the, the two the two dudes. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like I have literally, I have four hard drives, four t- four four by four terabyte hard drives that's already filled with stuff. Mm. And all I'm doing is making copies of them and giving them to the most important people that's been around me or been through my process. So if something should happen, or if I'm ready to start a documentary, everybody has their own piece of it. Mm. That's hard. I like that. That's fire. That's, I think that's one thing that um, really can make a brand go from here to here. Yeah, I right. mean, and you got to th- just, I mean, the world we live in, like, everybody wants to see it. And it, it's perception. Perception is everything now. So it ain't even, if a motherfucker don't see it, a picture, a video, they don't believe it. Nah, facts. But you was doing this before we before we knew content was key, you was doing it. Yeah, but see, my issue is, and and he can tell you, my phone probably has <laughs> 15,000 plus pictures and videos that I've never posted mm. of the who's who's. I'm talking FaceTime screenshots, video, whatever the case may be, like, and it will just never get posted mm. until the timing is right. Like, I'm sitting on so much stuff from, I'm talking about Uzi before Uzi was Uzi, like, like, gun a baby before baby was like it will just never get posted mm. do you sometimes downplay your celebrity what you mean like neglect who you are like not under not don't understand the impact that you have to the culture so i understand the impact but i wouldn't say i down because i don't look at myself as a fucking celebrity i would never look at myself as that like I I I'm I'm too touchable, I'm mm. too reachable, and when people can touch you and reach you, you can't be that, and that's how I always want to keep myself. Like I don't want to be a fucking celebrity. Mm. Somebody who's very important, yeah, but I I I just don't like that word celebrity. And you will not ever hear me call myself that mm. ever. I'm not a celebrity host. I'm not a celebrity radio person. None of that. I'm a host. I'm a radio personality. Like that's just. I just don't. I personally don't like that word. Unless you're like an A-lister. Like Drake. Yeah, if you're not a Drake future Beyonce, like, you're a celebrity if everybody knows you. Mm. Everybody's never going to know a radio personality. So that means I'm always going to be working. Mm. Charlemagne is one of the biggest radio personalities and everybody still don't know him. Fact. So it's like, like I just, I, 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 and then yet again, I'm reachable. 
people can touch me, people can relate, and that's the biggest thing. So. But even in that, do you like when I say downplay your celebrity? Because a lot of the, we see this with a lot, of, a lot of artists, right? They get hot, they still hanging in the hood, like they still the dude from yesterday when they got a hit today. Mm-hmm. And that ain't really, I don't want to say that ain't cool, but like, bro, like people are hating them. Like mm-hmm. you have, like it's a reason for people to hate on you. They're saying with you. So like, not even just the word celebrity, but just downplaying who you are. Like it's so many people that want what you got. Yeah, but I just, I, I it, it's a way that you move and it's a way you go about everything. Like me personally, I'm always going to stay the same nigga. I still go to the South Side. I still do stuff on the South Side. Like, I still touch people who knew me from day one all the way till now. But I'll never change on on motherfuckers. Mm. Like, you'll never hear me talking down on a motherfucker. or not, Like, that's what I mean by relatable. Like, you'll never hear me, somebody who went to school with me, downplaying them or something like that. Like, that's where all that animosity and stuff be coming from. Like, I'm, I'm too real and too solid of a person for for some fluke shit to happen to me, at least in this day and age right now. Bro, you out your motherfucking mind. You think niggas ain't hating? I, Just but, because you But but it, it niggas is hating. I completely, completely one thousand percent agree what niggas are hating. But a nigga hating and a nigga respecting is two totally different things. You can hate but still respect. But you respect the fact because I'm still down to earth, I'm still real, I'm still solid and you have a reason to hate because you're probably not in the position, but you don't have a reason to act because I haven't done nothing. Man. I don't like I get what you're saying. I understand. But it's some cruddy motherfuckers out here, bro. It is, bro, but it's and all niggas about- will t- niggas will think because niggas will think just because you with future, you got a million dollars in your pocket. You know this, bro. It's all about how you treat people and how you carry yourself and the perception, bro. I'm telling you. A nigga will not ever think I got a million dollars in my pocket no matter who I'm with. First off, I don't wear diamonds. All my jewelry is all gold. I don't walk around here flashing money no matter, no matter how much fucking money I got. I don't walk around flaunting and, and, and showing off my cars no matter how many cars. Like, I don't move how a nigga with money moves. Mm. I don't flex or finesse stuff just to look good to the public's eye. Like a bunch of these other motherfuckers. Like you're not gonna see me on Instagram or posting a picture with a hundred thousand dollars for what? That's making myself a target. No, you're not no, gonna no. see me walking, walking with wads of money. That's not me. No, fuck. It will never be me. Think I carry credit card? I don't even carry cash. Got a fucking eight hundred credit score. What am I carrying cash for? So like, I just know how to move to where I and. In this world we living in, there's plenty of plenty of people who are out their brains. Mm. But I don't move like I want something to happen to me. Right. I move very strategically. You're not looking for it. Yeah, yeah. Because a nigga gonna look at me and be like, oh, okay. But then see another nigga who hosts just like me or who's a DJ or whatever the case may be. Oh, this nigga got all diamonds in his chain. This nigga got on an ice style watch. This nigga got on Gucci shoes. This nigga got a Louis book bag. This nigga, like, that's attracting the attention. Mm. I don't attract attention. So how do you like? How, what do you think about securing yourself then, like? As far as a pistol or security, both. Okay, so with security, that makes me untouchable. Mm. I'm not relatable. If I start walking around with security, now I'm too Hollywood. That gives a nigga the even more reason to hate. Mm. So now, when you're not with your security, that's when shit usually happens. Mm. It's crazy because I, I get I've I've heard this argument before, right? But I've, it's, it's another side. So I've heard Peasy. I was talking to him about Peasy. And he was like, yo, sometimes security bring the problems. Agreed. Right? People, Agreed. people having security sometimes that make people want to do something to yeah, you. Yeah, because you got to think. I'm walking around South Side or my old hood in D.C. And I got security with me. And niggas are walking up to me that I know but my security don't know. Mm. The stigma of the security already is like, hey, my nigga, back the fuck up. Whatever the case may be. Like, a security can say something to rub somebody completely wrong. And it goes left from there. Mm. A security don't know everybody that I know. A security can't tell me who I want to allow up to me and et cetera. So it's like, I just don't ever want to, yet again, I'm not a celebrity. I want to move to where I'm walking down the street, a motherfucker, I'm in the grocery show. Hey, you ran to my kids today. You were at my son's school today. Yes, come on, let's take a pic. Like, I want to be relatable. No, that's, I'm that's touching fair. the people, so I'm a people's person. When you're a people's person, it's very rare something happens to you. So what you think about this then? I was talking to uh, Simba because this is the other side of it. It's the homie. And I think I think both sides are valid. Like I think I think you're right. But he had said something that was um 
that was interesting. And he was saying, like, basically, you got to secure yourself at all times. This is what he said. Can't just pull up to your podcast by myself. I have to pull up a certain way. There's certain events that we going to go to to where I might not be able to pull up how I pulled up today. We might be four deep, three, four, five, six, six security guards. You know what I'm saying? It, it changes as you grow. But you got to protect yourself at all costs. So even if you ain't got money for a security guard, you can still secure yourself. You can still, okay, I'm going to get to the venue 15 minutes before I need to perform. I'm going to park my car around the corner from the club and call the truck, and me and all my homies going to get in the truck. Then, after I'm done performing, homie got the truck waiting outside. So as soon as we done taking pictures and everything, we can jump back in the car. He can pull us right around the corner where nobody got to see the car that people I want to see me in and that. What you think? So I agree 1,000%, but I just said this in earlier in a progress report. They asked me, what was the question they asked me? They asked me, uh, I forgot what they asked me, but my response was, damn near damn near the same like i just i move totally different like so so to the first question i agree with him 1000 percent. but simba's an artist mm. simba has jury 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 <laughs> all my jury is gold bro yeah. all my but the average mind don't think about it but you go ahead take his diamond chain his diamond watch my presidential costs more than his diamond watch and his chain mm. people don't understand it but it, it it's not it's not flashy so Oh, we don't want that shit. That's cool. But he's an artist. He has to move that way. Mm. I'm not an artist. And I will not ever compare myself like I'm an artist. I'm a radio personality, an event host, a culture curator. I'm a tastemaker. I'm a young mogul. Mm. And a young mogul, that basically means I'm supported by the community, by the streets, by the schools, by the clubs, by the industry. So it's like I'm touching every single demo as a people's person. Mm. Why would you want to do something? If you decide to, now you're going to have problems with the street niggas in the city. Mm. I like that. And most importantly, God, to be honest, though. Agree. Yeah. Highly agree. Yeah, that's that's. First and foremost, because, like, at that point, like, when you're doing positive, I get it. I, I'm with you, though. I'm with you. When you're doing positive, it's like, bro, if something happened to me, then yeah, it like, was God playing. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not bringing no negative energy into the universe. Mm. Like, I'm not out here robbing niggas. I'm not out here scamming niggas. I'm not. There's no negative energy about me that I'm bringing into the universe. The most negative thing a motherfucker might say is I'm arrogant. Mm. But, or I'm an asshole, but I'm not bringing that energy into the universe, into the universe to where it's really hurting people or hindering people or making people do dumb shit. Yeah, no, nah, and it, it, even if somebody say you arrogant, like, that's a me thing, not a you thing, yeah, honestly. Yeah, like, agreed. That don't have nothing to do with you. Like. But then me, uh, uh, but see, I had to learn. Me being that way can stroke somebody's insecurities. Mm. So me being arrogant, like prime example, if a nigga walk up to me in a club, I'm hosting, it's 2,000 people in the club, it's music on, the nigga trying to get me to listen to his music. My response ain't worried about no artists right now, bro. Yeah. I'm working right now. But I had to learn that my aura and the way I respond can make a nigga feel the type of way. Facts. So I, I, I changed the way I respond. But yet again, that comes with growth. So like the old me, a nigga walk up to me in the club, hey, bro, listen to this, listen to this. Hey, bro, I'm an artist. My old response, my nigga, don't you see I'm working? Mm -hmm. But with growth, it's like now the nigga come up to me now, hey, bro, I'm working right now. Holler at somebody on my team. Go holler at this person. You want, you want you an artist? Go talk to the DJ, bro. Holler yeah. at me when the club over. Like, but it comes with time. I always blame the DJ, like, bro, I ain't, well, I'm just the guy on the mic, bro. You yeah, <laughs> like, so it's like, it's like, I, I've learned, like, it, it, you can you can talk to people a certain way to where it's not, they, they won't they won't feel a type of way. Not for sure. And that's where most people come into problems at, like, I'm just, and I'm still learning, like, like, there's a way to talk to people. Hmm. Like, even my team, even friends, like, there's just a way to have a conversation. Even if you don't want to or you do, like, it's just a way. And the way you go about it can determine everything that happens for the next fucking three, four, five days. No, you're right, bro. And, and especially, like, when you're dealing with people, because you just never know who, if they're not in a position right now, who will be who in a position. Who will be in a position, yeah. You don't right? want to burn no bridges. It's been so many times I told myself, oh, my God, thank God I helped this person out. Because, like, I was the big guy, 
And then like their shit surprised me, but because I was nice, they came back like yo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you be nah, but that shit, bro. Tables turn. Ain't nobody on top forever. Tables turn. Like nobody's on top forever, and that's 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 the thing that motherfuckers need to understand. Like, I wanted to get into like some personal stuff, like not really personal, but like um, feelings. Come on, man. We got nothing but time. Um, you damn near from Atlanta now. You can say that Atlanta's my home too. Yeah. We lost a lot of artists, bro. And you know, I this is just the question that just came up because like, I was in Baltimore and like we would lose people that was like popular, but they wasn't like super popular because mm-hmm. Atlanta, it was Atlanta, and like it would hurt me because like I seen a piece of me in them, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. they were successful, I seen they was on their way up, and like I could, I'm amongst them. Mm-hmm. I can only imagine how you feel coming up with these guys. These guys, some of these guys, got their first breakthrough. You. You know what I'm saying? You was one of the first interviews, one of the first people breaking the music. And when you see them, when you see them pass, how do, how does that affect you mentally and emotionally, honestly? Um, I mean, that shit takes a toll, like, tremendously. Um, it fucks with your mental. But you got to learn how to cope with things. Mm. Um. I literally just was asked this too, but the 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 my coping method is just different. The the luxury that I have with having these attachments or knowing these people or being a part of their process or just crossing their paths one day. Like I have memories with motherfuckers. So like yet again, like I told you in my phone, there's fifteen thousand plus. I got FaceTime screenshots, videos, pictures, text messages. What damn near anybody you could think of so it's like when i do get down or or when something hits me or when something happens i just go look at the positive mm. so like still current to this day like i can pull up my phone let me see my phone i can pull up my phone and when i tell you i still got like i'm talking full fucking threads of like let's see trouble look how many threads i got with trouble mm. so like Little key, like I got threads with all these, but it's like when those times come, I just go read them and think about the happiest times that they were. Like I go look at fucking videos of us doing dumb shit, us outside of me working and them working, kicking it, like shit like that to help cope with everything. So it's like I just, I personally. I just have a different way of 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 of, of coping with things. Mm. So, like even even Thug and Lucci, like when everything's going on with both of them right now, like I love both of them motherfuckers to death. Like seeing everything happening, like I know I can't talk to niggas right now, so I'll go look at an interview or something, or go read the whole thread from start to be to end when I first met them all the way to current. So it's just like. Those are my way of coping with things. But what about, like, I know with me it was definitely a part where it was, like, discouraging because it's like, bro, if this is happening to him, god damn, like, you ever get discouraged when you see so many positive people passing away and it's like, yo, like, if this could happen to them, it could damn sure happen to me. Yeah, I do. But one thing i always been told, if it's your time, and the man is ready for you upstairs, there's nothing you could do about it. Mm. And it's like, me personally, when it happens, like the the, the shit is, is draining. Mm. And I just know me, like, if I was, something was to happen, like I felt like I fulfilled everything I could possibly fulfill in the time that I have. That's heavy, bro. Didn't I say I said that multiple times? I had to knock on wood, cause it's like, bro, you get to a point where it's like, man, God really did, bro. There's times where niggas really yeah. wish for this, bro, dreamed of this. So it's like, like, I I've changed the culture, I've enhanced and helped, I've did the community, I've broke the records, I've hosted the festivals, the clubs, the concerts. Like, I've done. I've lived a great life thus far. Mm, mm, mm. Was that when you first was able to acknowledge that, right? Was that hard to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very hard. <laughs> it, it, it still is hard because it's like 
I mean, I know I'm not where I want to be at yet. But yet again, if it, I, I can't stop the man upstairs from doing whatever he wants to do. Mm. But not even acknowledging that, like, we can't disrespect God. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because, like, we got to acknowledge that because that's just real, bro. Niggas came from some times where we ain't never think of this. And you in, in way more rooms than I did and still could just acknowledge that, bro. 20 years ago, 10, even 10 years ago, niggas want to think about this. Look mm-hmm. at the rooms we in. Ain't that's a blessing? What T Grizzly said, ain't it a black? Come on, that's man. For real. Ain't it a black? Come on, bro. If it if it stopped tomorrow, not wishing that on on nobody, not wishing that on me or you, but if it stopped tomorrow, come on, bro. Look at what God did. That's crazy, bro. That's insane, bro. Damn. Um, I just had to re- let that resonate for a second. Yo, um, curious. Well, before we move on, who was the the hardest loss for you? Recently, do would... all of them. Mm. Man, it's so many. I would have to say trouble. Mm. Me and trouble, like I talk to trouble damn near every other day. Like, like about anything, non-work related. Like I talk to trouble. I was with trouble often. I would have to say trouble. Mm-hmm. Just because the attachment, like we were, we were really, 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 really tight. And I mean, I'm 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 cool with a lot of people in the industry, but I do know who's a real friend and who's just an industry friend. And Trouble was a real, real friend. Do you have a hard time with accepting that, or did you have a hard time with accepting that at a point? What the separation between industry friend and real friend? Mm-hmm. No, nah, not at all. You was always able to like acknowledge it and be yeah, cool. yeah. Because I mean, I know a, a lot of artists. Let's put it in this way. A lot of artists need people like. Me, just like I need a lot of artists. Facts. Yeah. But uh, there's just I'm I'm very observant, and there's there's just plenty of things that I can observe observe to determine if you're going to be a real friend or industry friend. Mm. Like from conversations to to what's needed, what's done, who's checking up on who, like little stuff like that. So like I, but I I me coming in this industry, like I knew not to get my feelings involved in to when when it's an industry friend or a real friend. That's fire, bro. So you didn't get caught up in the Not the one. whole genuine phase. Not one. Because I definitely would, coming up, just understanding who was genuine. I'm like, I used to always say, like, niggas ain't genuine. Like, these niggas no, ain't genuine. No, a lot of them are not, though. A, 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 a lot of motherfuckers in this industry are not even just artists. Like, a lot of motherfuckers are just not genuine. They're mm. using you for what you got or what you can do for them. But at the same time, you got to do the same thing. Mm. And until you understand that you got to do the same thing, you're always going to have your feelings involved. Mm. Yeah, no, nah, I had to learn that shit. Because I make sure... I make sure, genuine or not, industry friend or not, I'm interviewing you, I'm doing something for you, you're doing something for me. Mm. No, fact. no matter if it's a drop, if it's a video, if it's a picture, like all that shit goes a long way. Me posting a picture, me posting a picture with any fucking body you could think of, and I'm in a city, or about to come to their city that they're from. You know how many after hour, I mean, after parties gonna want me for whatever I'm doing? Mm. How many bookers I'm gonna get? So it's like, you gotta use that shit to your advantage. Mm. Me posting a clip of a motherfucker saying, yeah, you helped me from start. You was this person before start. You gave me my first radio interview, and I'm in that nigga city. Or, or if I just post it on a random, it's going to enhance me and my brain. Hmm. So when it's an industry thing, it has to wait. It has to wait. Like, even when I was on radio, I would turn down interviews. Hmm. Like, oh, they want to come to the city? They want to come to my show? Okay, cool. Well, if they want to come interview with me, they need to do this, this, this. Or I need to interview them first before every other station. If not, I don't want to interview them. That's smart. Just understanding the business. Like, yeah. That's, that's smart. Because a like nigga do 50 interviews and then come to you on the 51st interview. Even though my shit be different, my questions be different, but it's like, damn, bro, I've been sitting in interviews all day. Now I ain't got the energy I need. So yeah. bring them to me first so I don't want to interview them. That's a fact, bro. That's so real. That's so real. And even if your interview, even if your interview is different, shit. If they if they if they didn't drop the thousand already, it's mm-hmm. like I'm already behind the curve. Yeah, behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah, fact. Yo, what was the the um the biggest highlight of your career? You think? 
Oh. Uh, Wait, somebody just asked him this too? Yeah. Uh, man, I ain't about to keep asking these same questions. And fuck it, bro. Don't even tell me that shit. No, no, it's cool. So my Mother's Day, my annual Mother's Day event. But outside of that, Drake. Bringing Drake to a spell house. That, and then the future. I'm the official fucking host for the One Big Party Tour. I'm on tour with one of the biggest fucking artists, and I'm not even just like the opening host. I got a 30, 40 minute set before Future go on. Mm. So where does Young Thug Million Dollars Worth of Game rank at? <laughs> you where, said does, what? where does Young Thug Million Dollars Worth of Game rank? Man, see, but see, that was so organic. Like that shit was literally. He called me. He was like, "Hey, come to the studio. I want to talk to you." Uh, we talked and everything. I didn't know they was fucking about to do an interview. We sitting in there. I'm sitting off to the side. They about to start. He stops everything and say, nah, he got to introduce us. He's the hardest nigga in Atlanta. He's the flyest nigga in Atlanta. He's the biggest host in Atlanta. He got to introduce us. Gillian Waller was like, okay. Nigga Thug not made them, but told them, hey, he's introducing us. That's how that shit came about. That's not top of the list? It Stuff like that. It's 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 unbelievable, and the stories behind it is just so. That's why I I can't even put them on the list just because of how it came about. Mm. Like if 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 he would have called me and be like, "Hey, you about to introduce us?" That could have been on the list. Okay. But it was so organic and so, it wasn't even supposed to happen. Yeah. That was fire. Yeah, like I I was, <laughs> was not fire. expecting that from Thug. Like I. I was not expecting that. I called you right after I think. I was like, bro, this, was, nigga, this nigga just literally made me introduce them. You get any extra bookings for that? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, like, my, my, but see, my thing, I turned down so much stuff. Like, I turned down so much stuff just because, like, I'm a quality over quantity person. Nah, fact. Um, so, like, I, man, I turned down so much stuff. But, like, I heard you charging like $10,000. <laughs> 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 it's like, let me stop. <laughs> Chill out. It wasn't like, too far from it, but. <laughs> but like, like I literally like, like, like little shit like that. Like that shit just goes a long way because it's like it, it be so unexpected. Like, and those are the best times mm, when it's unexpected. And like that's how that's how I know what's genuine and what's not. No, that's and, hard. And that's how I know what. Like prime example, even with Thug, before he released what was his latest album, Punk. Yeah. With the pink shit. Yeah, yeah, before he released that album, probably a month before, I got off of the radio, sat in the studio with him from 10 p.m. until 8 in the morning, listening to about 300 songs, mm. helping him pick songs, giving him my opinion. So it's like little shit like that. Like, you you can't you can't force no shit like that. Bro. Like, that's how you know what's genuine and what's not. 2 chains, his latest album. Me and Ferrari sitting in the studio with him. Who should I put on this? What's the order should I put this? What should I do with this? What should I do with this? What song should be on the deluxe? We're helping. Smirk, Dirk. The fucking, the song with him and Drake. I heard that shit two months, three months before it fucking came out. He was supposed to go do the video on Barbados with Dirk. I mean, with, with Drake. The nigga, I still got the messages in my phone. Nigga let me hear and I'm like, I'm like, Dirk, that shit is a hit. He like, man, I don't know. My verse wasn't long enough. Blah, 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 blah. I still have the messages. Me and Roy breaking it on air. Dirk is checking in like, Dirk like, yo, what the record doing? We like, my nigga, we told you this shit is out of here. Two, three days in. How the record doing? This shit is out of here, bro. Like, like, but that's how you know shit is genuine and shit isn't genuine. Like, when you allow me to be in a space and, and reap benefits that nobody else would usually reap, mm. that's how I know. That's how I can separate genuine from just industry. Mm -hmm. So like the Dirk letting me hear a song, sending me the song before it's even out, that I can fucking leak, show trust. Thug letting me hear his old, whole fucking catalog, 300 songs, and me not leaking nothing, saying anything, little shit like that. Man, you know what I hear out of all this? Nigga, niggas need to move to Atlanta, New York. Like, you got to be in a room. Because this ain't happening in a, just a small, like, bro, none of that's happening in Baltimore. None of it. Not, zip, zada, but zero. I'm going to keep it 1,000. It's happening, but it's happening in D.C. Yeah, not for sure. I always talk about that. I tell yeah, like, these all the time. It, man, it, I'm going to keep it 1,000, bro. This shit happens in every city. Any, any big city it happens in. You just got to know when niggas are in town. 
when niggas are on the tour dates are coming there. Like niggas just gotta be in tune. No, but y'all got Bro, y'all got hit after person after person after bro. Yeah, niggas yeah. ain't breaking niggas like that anywhere else. And that's not even DC, not even New York no more. So and look, New York me, was the mecca of hip hop. Let me tell you how you get them relationships. The same niggas that niggas be breaking here in Atlanta, them same niggas in these other markets can do the same thing. Get up on them niggas early. You break them there. It's a track record that shows who breaks songs on radio. Your video time stamps all of that. Mm -hmm. That's how you build those relationships. How you think I got relationships with everybody else that's not from Atlanta? Mm. Lola Brooke, I ran her song back 30 fucking times in a matter of 30 minutes on the radio. Ain't nobody fucking did that. Mm. Before it was the don't play what it is now. So it's like you just got to take those risks and you got to you got to do your research and and know who's who and who's coming up and etc. Cuz they have to come to all these cities. Yeah, not nah, for sure. You right. You right, man. You right. Mm, mm, mm. You take the old school approach, the uh, funk flex approach. Yeah, and but that's what that ain't even gonna lie. That's where I got it from. That's probably one of the only people I've ever seen do the shit like, and and he run shit back like, <laughs> and I just always told myself, I'm like, okay, cool, funk flex, running back five, six times. I said I gotta do this shit at least double, triple. In the whole boy, you you can't even take a ride. In New York, when I, he going yeah. to do that shit ten times. Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, relax. That's why he got that name that he got. Like niggas respect. No nah, facts. He, let me, he take risk on records. So let me ask you this then: Drake or Future? <laughs> you can't you can't even compare those. Now why I say that, and that's not even a politically correct answer. I'm about to say, come on. No, no, that's not even a politically correct answer. Both of those are in two different two different realms. They're in two different worlds. Future created a whole sound that a bunch of motherfuckers are mimicking and coming up off of. Drake is just Drake. He's one of a kind. Yeah. So I don't even think you can compare those two. Like, I think they're both on a fucking pedestal, like, neck and neck, to be completely honest. Mm. Like, the game wouldn't be the same without Drake. The game wouldn't be the same without Future. Mm. Okay. How much, how big of an impact did that song have with Dirk, with Drake? It changed Dirk's whole fucking career. You know, a lot of people don't think, a lot of people think, he been lit, but a lot of people don't think it. Yeah, no, no, no. So so I'm going to even break it down in better form. Dirk was lit. Dirk had the streets behind him. Dirk had the hoods behind him. Dirk had the whole Midwest. Dirk had female fans out this world. He, ain't, he wasn't the, the Dirk the, he is the, No. The feature made him commercial. Mm. It put him on a, a Grammy type level. Yeah, that shit. It made Dirk a global icon. This shit went next level. Yeah, like, and, and Dirk been had music, like, but it, that's just the Drake effect. Like, Drake has done it for everybody. He's done it for Lil Baby. Like, he's done it for Migos. He's done for it for McCoy. He's done it for City Girl. Like, he's done it for everybody. Like, that's just, that's Drake's blessing. That's an old, that's an OG in the game, a nigga who's the GOAT, bringing niggas up with him. He, he, bro, he posted Kodak Black on his Instagram and that shit. Yeah, like, no flocking. Like this is years ago. Yeah, but he, he, that's that's just, but that's a blessing that's instilled in him that he's given to the game. But let's not get it twisted though. You know what Drake understands though, because just that's as much, youthful. just as much as he helping niggas, that's helping him too. Yeah, it's helping him stay youthful. But I transpire back to everything I said earlier. When an old nigga grabs a young nigga. It's to give the young nigga the game, but the return is the young nigga keeping the old nigga youthful. Nah, facts. And Drake ain't old, but I'm just saying, that's the, that's nah. exactly what it is. You're right. And yeah. then you still bring a nigga out with you, a prime example. None of that shit hurting Drake. None of it. That's the perfect person to compare all this shit to. Facts. Nah, facts. It ain't hurting that man at all, and it's helping the young nigga, and it's helping him. Yeah. And people respecting him more because he's bringing up young niggas. That's a fact. Let me ask you this, bro. Um, get in my hosting bag real quick. You like the host better in a crowd or in a DJ booth when you can control? I've never hosted in a DJ booth. I've never hosted. I saw a DJ you mess with the, the controls. You was just at the Future two, concert in DC. Oh, that's two, three minutes. I'm never in a DJ booth, ever. Mm. Ever. Any host that stands in a DJ booth and stays there, something's wrong with you. You shouldn't be hosting. You should be DJing. Mm. Ah, fact. A host should be able to test your crowd, mm. interact with the crowd. The DJ can't move. You're the DJ's eyes. No, if you're up there with a the DJ, how can you interact? How can you see what a DJ can't see? So if I'm in the booth, it's for two, three minutes max, and it's probably me telling the DJ something for us to be on the same page. No, facts. Let me ask you this. 
now that you got experience under your belt, do you sometimes want to be a DJ? No. No? But I can be a DJ. And if hosting ever dies down, I will be a DJ. Mm. I know song selection. And and let me say this to where it doesn't disrespect any DJ. The host and the DJ is a team. So, like, the DJs I work with and majority of the DJs, like, they trust me enough to if they're going left and we need to go right, they'll trust me enough. So song selection, I can help them with. Or, like, prime example, if we in a club and a DJ booth is all the way up top and a DJ can't see, I'm his eyes. So if I feel him going left and I'm like, nah, maybe we need to stay here or go right, he'll listen to me. Yep. Vice versa. Like, if I'm going left, I'll listen to him because we're a team. So... I know song selection like the back of my hand. I didn't play music and I wouldn't call it DJ because I don't I don't want to disrespect DJs because I'm not a DJ and I don't know like I don't know how to DJ. I just know song selections. I know how to drag a song, put it in the left cart, press play, blah blah blah. I can mix, I can fade, whatever the case may be, but I'm not like a DJ. Right. So I personally I've done in the club. I've played songs for 30 minutes straight. A DJ, you just seen a DJ can walk out the booth, I'll play it, I'll play it. 20 minutes of music just because I know song selection but that's just because I, I know music mm. and I know what the club likes because I'm in the clubs all the time but nah no time soon I got another if I if I want to be in the clubs when I'm 40 I got another 10 years in this hosting shit yo let me ask you this I feel like hosts should get paid more off their song selection shit <laughs> I'm just, that's just my opinion because sometimes and maybe not in Atlanta but sometimes niggas will book OK DJ or, an incredible or, host. Incredible host. Yeah. But then they start looking at you when the music ain't right. Because your brand, if your brand is bigger than the DJ, that's how it's always going to be. If it's book, like, bro, that's they, the DJ. Like, yeah, but if they book an OK DJ, they're booking you to enhance that DJ. And if you're not enhancing that DJ, then something's wrong. I should be the DJ then. But I see, I get this. These are things that, listen, no cap. Might no, I want to watch what you say. Yeah, facts, facts, facts. No, no, no. I'm talking. No, this is more to the host. This is more, I mean, to the, to the promoter. Yeah. I've been in the club times. And like a nigga be like, yo, tell him what to play, tell him what to play. And I'm like, okay, cool, because that's, that's but that's disrespectful to some DJs. Like, like a, a D, DJs take their art so serious, and I had to learn that. Like, mm. I used to be the one years, years ago. Like, hey, play this, play this, play this, play this, play this. But I had to learn, let them do them, and I feed off of them. Nah, for then sure. there's a time in a party where they're gonna feed off of me and be like, hey, where should we go? What should we do? Or send me a text and be like, hey, what you think we should do? What you think about this? And you gotta build that repertoire and that relationship because. If if it's you telling them what to play, telling them what to play, ain't no DJ taking that wheel. I don't give a fuck who it is. Nah, facts. Because it's like, what am I here for? Now, that'd be sometimes if you if you get a, a new DJ. Yeah, you, but a new DJ, but that's when your brand is bigger. Well, not a, a new DJ or or a young or a DJ that ain't on your level is gonna kiss your ass to try to get where where you're at or to be on your good side. See, and he ain't gonna never last in the game. I ain't talking about kiss. I'm talking about like sometimes like if you get a not not new DJ as in just coming up, but like let's say you go somewhere else and the DJ you never worked with before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes niggas be bombing, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, they they do, but but you gotta let them bomb, mm -hmm. and it's gonna fall on the DJ. If a DJ is bombing, let them bomb. You still do your job and do what you gotta do to enhance the crowd. Nah, facts. I'm good. The DJ could be piss poor ass. If I'm hosting, I guarantee you every motherfucker in there still have a good time. Now the music selection might be bad, but guess what? You hear what I said? Music selection that ain't got shit to do with me. Nah, facts. I done seen promoters get on the hose as if the music selection is bad. But that's because that's because your brand is probably bigger than that DJ and they're paying you to or they're trying to pay you so you so they can be cheaper with the DJ. Facts. Nah, I, right, but it don't it, it don't beat having a both just have just have both. Just have a good DJ and a host. Yeah, but sometimes I ain't like that. It don't it don't beat that. I didn't I didn't I didn't work with plenty of motherfuckers that ain't good DJs. But I had to make them better. Nah, it's, it's something about it, bro. When do you think you're getting out of it? I don't know. You don't ever think you're too old for this shit? Radio, Greg Street is damn near 50. Hosting in the club. Hosting? There's hosts that, let, let's be very transparent, there's niggas that's 45, 50 in the clubs now. Mm. I ain't even touched 35. I ain't even touched 33. I ain't even touched 32. What are you thinking about getting married, nigga? I mean, I, I don't rush that. Like, <laughs> I, I don't rush that, like... I bet you're not rushing that. The, the way things is out here, boy. Uh-uh. It, it, man, that's that's a whole nother conversation. Like the shit I see, the you the 
fuck the clubs. Bro, I see married bitches getting smacked by my niggas. Mm. Like, I, I see it, there's not a day goes by that I don't see somebody girlfriend getting slutted out by somebody I know. I, I, say, I used to say this a lot, bro. I feel like the bachelor life gave me a lot of PTSD, bro. Yeah. Because it's like, when you see it, it's like you can't trust nothing. Can't trust nothing, yeah. Even when you got a girl, it's like, man, I done seen so it's real life PTSD, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I can't unsee it, bro. It's just crazy, bro. No, nah, that's a fact. Like that, but I mean, when the time is right, it'll happen. It'll mm-hmm. happen. But as far as like how much longer I got in hosting, I don't plan on being in the clubs after thirty five, unless mm-hmm. it's like a big bag. Quality over quantity. Nah, fact. Um, but the way shit going down, if I wanted to extend it for ten years, I can. Mm-hmm. It just went. I, I can't say when I'm gonna be done. I'll be done when it's not fun. Who's your favorite DJ to work with? I mean, it just depends on the type of party. So like, you got to give me party, party scenarios or, or or types of parties for me to tell you because every DJ is is great in their own realm. If so, you had to choose one though, in any situation, there's not one DJ that that every yet again all DJs have pros and cons. There's not one DJ. Like, a, a DJ might can body an R&B party better than another DJ, but can't body this type of party better than this DJ. So it's mm. just, like, it just all depends. Like, and I've worked with anybody you can fucking think of. Like, I don't work with the biggest, the medium, the small. Like, there's plenty of great DJs. There's plenty of good DJs. There's plenty of DJs that need direction. There's plenty of DJs who possibly are goats. But yet again, sometimes certain DJs don't stick in certain avenues. Mm. So you don't have, like, a, a general aspect of, like, just... Overall, you wouldn't pick. You know. I mean, overall, like it, like I said, it, it just all depends on. It depends on the day of the week. It depends on the mood. It depends on who's in the building. Like, but you got you got plenty of DJs. Like you got DJ P Pharrell, which is an incredible DJ. You got DJ Bluetooth. You got DJ Tone. You got DJ Mark B. Uh, Ferrari is uh, in fucking becoming an incredible DJ. Mm. Aunt Dirty, like it's so many fucking DJs. Vaughn, like everybody has their own realm of what they're great at. And I just know everybody pros and cons. So their pros, I don't bother, but their cons, I help them pick up when I'm hosting with them. Mm. I like that. I like that. Do you um? What's your favorite type of music? R and B. I listen to slow music all the time. I hate. I hate outside of the club. I don't listen to club music. Same, but I feel like parties is killing these R and B parties, bro. Yeah, it's about thirty m a week, bro. I feel like I feel like it, it just got introduced a few years back, and this is. Just- Ran yeah, it in that's, that's because yet again, all the DJs, well, not all the DJs, DJs that majority of the people are saying play the same shit, play the same set. Mm, mm, mm. Do you like, um, I think my favorite style of DJing is like, uh, we do this in Baltimore called blending. Mm, I know what you're talking about. That's my, fa- y'all don't do that down here. Nah. That's Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. top five. That's the best style. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, it's cool, but yet again, to each his own. That shit a so Baltimore hard, DJ bro. wouldn't work out here. Yeah, no, nah, facts. Yeah, so, a DC DJ will work out here more no. than what? Yeah, play the, just the hot shit like. Yeah, but then they'll try to insert go go. Nah, 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 nah. Niggas not doing that. Nah, I niggas not really. You. Niggas not really doing like, like the big D, like Steve O, like. Okay, that's because Steve O travels the world. Steve O DJs everywhere, so yeah, of course Steve O wouldn't do it. Yeah, that's, I'm thinking about the big D, like they ain't, they ain't not about to. Just don't know go go with it. No, they're not going to do right. that. They not going to do that. That's wild. That's crazy. All right, I'm telling you, man. Like, I didn't seen it all. They get the go go one out here? Yeah. Damn. And not, not there's nothing wrong with it, but you got to know your crowd. You got to know where you're at. You got to know the people that's in it. Like, it, a lot of people don't think. Yeah. Nah, facts. Now, I think blending definitely my favorite. You got a favorite style or is this? Nah, I mean, cause I don't even know all the styles of DJing. Like, but I just know a great DJ when I when I see one or hear one. Nah, facts. I like that blending shit, bro. I wish I could do that. I wish I could DJ like that shit as so well. But nah, bro. I think that's all we got, dog. Uh, I I I enjoyed the conversation, man. It was definitely. Damn, I was here for an hour and forty minutes. Yeah, bro. Wow. Yeah, bro. <laughs> what? I, I, that's I, good. No, that's great. Yeah, man. A lot to talk about, bro. You doing your damn thing, man. You've been doing your thing, bro. Appreciate that, you man. really like you out here, man. And you ain't look up to nobody. You don't got nobody. You can't give me top three radio personalities. Goats. Give me three. Oh, then three goats? That's totally different. All right, wait, wait, wait. But wait, just because somebody is a goat don't mean that I look up to them. All right. 
like I can respect somebody's craft and respect what they've done, but give me top three without Steve Harvey, mm -hmm. like them. Okay, Greg Street, Ryan Cameron, Frank Ski, and then Frank the honorable mention are the Dirty Boys. Frank Ski was fine. They changed the culture. Mm. All those changed the culture in their own perspective ways. So what about in this time? I guess in this time, as far as what? Like this time age, cause I well. Uh, Radio Goats in this time age? Yeah. Flag out DC. Ferrari Simmons. Mm. There's nobody else on a pedestal with us. There's some young there's some young people out there doing that thing. But who? There's some young people out not they not on. Yeah, but you level. said goats. No, nah, facts. I mean up and coming goats, like hypothetically is No, a, you can't mix up and coming with goats. It's like no, it's no, it's no, a chick in DC doing her thing, bacon bear. Bacon bear, I know I know exactly who bacon. She's extremely dope. Nala Simone is coming up, yeah. Thing. But but you said goat. Nah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You, you got it. You got it. You yeah, got it. You it's got two it, totally got it, different you things. You got it. You got it. I, I'm curious. That's like saying who are up up and coming goat in basketball. You can't say nobody. I, mean, goat, I would go. Who? I would say probably like Ja Morant. He's not. A, you can't call a nigga up and coming. Jogger McGrant is an incredible fucking player, but you can't. What? Stat line, what expert like you can't you <laughs> no, gotta see you gotta see it first like and we see it now but no. you gotta see it for longevity. Look, the the best thing I could say and 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 this was the greatest thing somebody ever told me, it's not about being the MVP, it's being the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's not. It's a mar It's literally Nipsey's been saying it forever. So <laughs> it's a marathon. A nigga can only be a goat when they damn near have been damn near about to be in the Hall of Fame. What that nigga Drake say about ten years ago. Oh yeah, we'll see if you're around a decade from now. Yeah, oh. <laughs> exactly what he said. And, and, yeah, no that's cap. what I'm saying. Like, and John Morant is phenomenal. He 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 he's on the right fucking path. But he still got to show us. You got yeah, give you us. got. We got to see it. We see it, but we got to see it. See it. Nah, that nigga fact. is incredible. Nigga is about to be the face of the league. Nah, fact. I am curious to see how once the old people get out, or not old, the, the legends that's in doing that thing now. I'm curious to see how the new wave of It'll be totally different. I'm, I just want to see how it's going to be. It'll be totally different. The the new wave of thing niggas are weird. A lot of niggas are weirdos. Let's just be very transparent. Sure. Uh, but the the new wave just gonna be totally different, man. It's gonna it's, be totally different. I'm excited to see that though. Yeah, no, it's gonna it's gonna be dope. Change is always dope. Change is always dope. But they gotta instill their own flavor onto the culture. You shooting for radio forever morning show? Uh, no, nah, I'm still a night show guy. As long as I'm in the clubs, I'm gonna be a night show guy. When I get a wife, have kids, then I'll go to afternoons, two to six. And then when I'm over two to six, then the morning, after the morning, I'll retire. That's how radio usually goes, though. You go night, morning. I mean, night, afternoons, morning. Mm -mm -mm. I can see it, man. You're going to be like, you're going to kill it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that podcast space. I might have to go to Joe Button route. <laughs> <laughs> Like in this podcast, if I can do what I want, they're gonna telling me shit. That's that, no, that is that's that's the plus about podcasts though. Like, it's freedom. Like, you can say whatever you want, no remorse, no cut cards. Like, it, it's opinionated. Like radio, you got to be politically correct. But you need. But I just wish people understood. Like, oh, I said this again. You need both, bro. Like people, two people. Like you can you radio can coexist, will never die. bro. Radio will never die. Like, because there's a billion people who ain't paying nine ninety nine who are regular people who would never pay for a subscription to be on anything. Not even radio. I'm just saying, like, like you can have a Joe Button and a a Charlemagne of God. Like, Agreed. you don't have to like people try to like. You, it's always going to happen. It's the world we live in. There is always going to be a comparison. It's retarded. Because everybody has their own opinion. Everybody thinks their opinion matters. Mm mm mm. I really love what you're doing. I know I said it, bro. I'm, I'm low key living vicariously through you. I can't have one of those. I'm like, nah, I can't do it, bro. First of all, the club's closed too late. It's too late, bro. Niggas, no cap. Niggas say, yo, um, pull up, bro. I let you open. I'm like, I really don't want to do it, but I'll do it. He said, pull up at 12 o'clock. I said, what? <laughs> he said, what? Like, you sound about right. He said, the clothes get here like two. I said, yeah. bro, if that's my goal, I don't even want it. Like, if the goal is to close and get here at 2, nah, yeah, bro. I get to the club at 1.30, 1.45. And I leave at 2.45, 3 o'clock. Oh, so you still leave at 3? No, I get paid by. So it depends on what time I get there and start. I'm only there for an hour. Okay. But if I get there at 1.45, I'm leaving right before 3. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, Cause an hour in the club? Yeah, that's not bad. But that see, there's no other host that get paid by the hour. Everybody else is in there probably two, three hours. Max. Minimum, I meant. My bad. Three hours is crazy, but. I don't know. It happens. 
I mean, I thought twelve or two still was a thing, or the two hour thing, like one, no, one two, hour forty five minutes. No, nah, two hours is cool. It's nothing wrong with it. I mean, to each his own. Yeah, it's different down here. Yeah, it's different. Like it's different. Nigga said twelve o'clock. I said twelve o'clock to open. Bro, I'm not, I'm not fucking with y'all niggas, man. The niggas be at the uh, after hours. Oh my god, it be. That's Atlanta for you. I'm too old for that shit. That's bro. Atlanta for you. I'm too old for that shit, bro. Yo, what's the um? What is, are you doing any, what What would be a great opportunity for you now? I'm just curious to hear. You know how back in the day you took gigs, this is a great opportunity. This is a, it's a great opportunity. What's a, what's a great opportunity for you now? Mm. Hosting a festival, like Rolling Loud, being an official host. That would be a great opportunity. And I'm not talking about like on the side interviewing the artist. I'm talking about like the host. The host. Like that makes sense. Bring it, not introducing the artist, but right before early artists go on, the mini set, whatever the case may be, that would be dope. That's really a, that's a conversation away, literally. Like, mm-hmm. low key, like that's not really that hard for you. Like, yeah. And then another goal would be being an official host for Live Nation, do all their tours. <sighs> that ain't, I don't see that being an opportunity. They paying for that. I can see them dropping a bag for that. Why do you think it's a matter of time? Nah, you stunting. See, they niggas like him be full of shit. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, I'm on to the niggas like this. Let me tell you what they do, right? He probably already had the conversations, right? He come on here and say that's a goal for when it comes. Nah. Like, I said that was a goal. Nigga, you already had the conversation. You full a, of shit, you, I ain't had that conversation. <laughs> I just got in the tour world. I ain't going to lie to you. That's one thing I don't do. You liking it? Lie. Yeah, tour is incredible. Like, I'm reaching the masses. I'm sold out arenas. I'm 15, 16,000 a night. In the NBA arenas, like it don't get no better than that. Are and you capitalizing off of it though? Of course, content is key. There's about to be a a, a whole uh, hour documentary. I did what? I did six dates. I did North Carolina, Atlanta, Chicago, DC, Boston. That's five dates already. It's about to be an hour documentary on the first three dates, and then a whole part two for the last two dates, and then there's about to be the second half of the second leg of the tour. Uh, content is everything. Bro. You gotta get like some like stickers or some shit. It's already, like, it's already. Have to give it everybody at the door. <laughs> it's, it's listen, bro. I'm telling you, bro. This shit is about to be like clockwork. That was just my first leg, so it was like, okay, let me get familiar, let me get understood, let me, let me, let me see how to move and etc. It's over with. Now. Like some church fans with your name on the back, it, bro. It's over. <laughs> Twenty thousand of them. T-shirts. One big party on the front. I party with the goat. Fly got DC on the back. That's hard. <laughs> Get the video guy after too. Like, yo, how was how was the host it's type already, shit? Yeah, that's already that's already done. See, bro, that shit hard, bro. Let you go, man. <laughs> yo, let niggas know how to follow you for the niggas that don't know, man. All my all my social media. I am Fly got DC. That's on every single social media platform there is. That's simple. That easy. Great conversation, man. The goat himself, amongst the goat. J Hill, Fly Guy DC. Great conversation. You gotta come back, man. We out. It's a wrap. Yes, Sersky. That was hard, bro.